بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم پروفیسر ناصر اقبال پرنسپل گورنمنٹ ڈگری بوائز سائنس اینڈ کامرس کالج گلستان جوہر شیخ زائد سینٹر آئی ایم ایسوسی ایٹ پروفیسر آف زولوجی مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان مائی پریویس لیکچر I have completed the structure and function of human brain. Today the next topic from chapter 3 coordination and control is endocrine system. What is endocrine system? Endocrine system can be defined as a system that consists of ductless glands of the body is known as endocrine system. I repeat, a system that consists of ductless glands of the body is called endocrine system and their secretions are known as hormones. Students in past, in the beginning, you have studied about glands. What are glands? Glands are basically aggregation of specialized cells that secrete chemical substances to perform different functions in the body. In our body, there are two types of glands. Number one, the exocrine gland and number two, the endocrine glands. Exocrine glands are also known as duct bearing glands. Duct bearing glands means these glands possess ducts and their secretion reach at the site of action through their duct. For example, secretion of liver that is bile reaches in the duodenum through bile duct. Pancreatic secretion reach in the duodenum through pancreatic duct. Mammary gland possesses lactating ducts and their secretions reach at the nipples through these lactating ducts. On the other hand, Ductless glands do not possess any kind of duct as found in the exocrine gland. Ductless gland pour their secretion directly into the blood stream and their secretions reach at their target organs via blood circulation. Secretions of these ductless gland, that is endocrine glands, are known as hormones. So we should know what are hormones. Hormones are organic molecules made up of amino acid, peptide chain or steroids. Most of the hormones are made up of steroids. Following are major endocrine glands in our body. Number one, hypothalamus. Number two, pituitary gland. Number three, thyroid gland. Number four, parathyroid gland. Number five, thymus. And number six, adrenal gland. These are also called major endocrine glands. I repeat. Hypothalamus, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, thymus and adrenal gland are the major endocrine gland in human body. Dear students, in our body there are some organs which contain group of cells or tissue that perform function as endocrine gland. 
these are not major endocrine gland but they secrete chemical substances which are known as hormone so on the basis of hormone we can say they act like endocrine gland but they are not major endocrine gland these include pancreas kidney heart digestive tract placenta testes ovaries and pineal gland among major endocrine gland the first gland is hypothalamus hypothalamus is now considered as master gland of the body previously pituitary gland was designated as master gland of the body but now hypothalamus is considered as master gland of the body let's see the location of hypothalamus hypothalamus is attached to the roof of third ventricle near thalamus hypothalamus is attached to the roof of third ventricle near thalamus what are the functions of hypothalamus we have also discussed in the structure and functions of brain the major function of hypothalamus are number 1 it acts as connecting link between nervous and endocrine system it acts as connecting link between nervous and endocrine system it acts as control center it receive information on status of the body via nerve impulses it monitors composition and temperature of the blood different types of messages are interpreted evaluated outgoing messages dispatched via nerves and hormones through hypothalamus hypothalamus possesses a most important role in feedback system that govern secretion of endocrine system its neurosecretory cells produce inhibiting and releasing hormones some of its cells secrete anti diuretic hormone and oxytocin hormone so it can be said that hypothalamus is the controlling center that control its function via nerves as well as through its different secretions number 2 is uh, pituitary gland pituitary gland has a size equal to the pea seed it consists of mass of glandular tissue pituitary gland is situated in a small cavity of a skull known as cella tarsica it is attached with hypothalamus by means of a stalk known as infundibulum infundibulum is a stalk that connects the pituitary gland with hypothalamus there are two main parts of pituitary gland in a human body in other mammals the pituitary gland consists of three parts in human there are two parts in pituitary gland number 1 is neurohypophysis and number 2 is adenohypophysis neurohypophysis is also known as 
the posterior lobe of pituitary gland and adenohypophysis is also called anterior lobe of pituitary gland we will discuss the functions of pituitary gland in detail but some common functions which are regulated through pituitary gland or the secretions of pituitary gland such as growth metabolism sexual reproduction and lactation i repeat the pituitary gland having a size of pea seed located in a small cavity of the skull called cella tarsica pituitary gland is attached with hypothalamus by means of a stalk known as infundibulum there are two parts of pituitary gland in human number 1 the neurohypophysis and number 2 adenohypophysis pituitary gland regulate different functions such as growth metabolism sexual reproduction and lactation pituitary gland control different functions and the secretions of pituitary gland also inhibit the functions of other gland or regulate the functions of other gland in the previous slides students you have seen that the nerves that arise from hypothalamus their endings are present in the posterior pituitary these nerve ending of hypothalamus located in the posterior pituitary secrete hormone like oxytocin anti diuretic hormone which are stored in the posterior lobe of pituitary gland adenohypophysis which is also known as anterior lobe of the pituitary gland this one is the larger in size compared to the posterior pituitary it releases hormones as i told you that the posterior lobe stores the hormone of hypothalamus whereas the anterior pituitary releases hormone the hormones which are released from anterior lobe include growth hormone also known as somatotrophin hormone thyroid stimulating hormone also known as thyrotrophin hormone adenocorticotropic hormone or acth luteinizing hormone or lh hormone follicle stimulating hormone or fsh hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone or msh and prolactin also called lactogenic hormone i repeat the hormones which are synthesized in hypothalamus they are stored in the posterior pituitary include oxytocin and anti diuretic hormone the hormones which are secreted from the anterior lobe according to one estimate there are more than 30 hormones which are released from the anterior pituitary but here we will discuss the common hormone which are secreted from the adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary these include growth hormone also known as somatotrophin thyroid stimulating hormone or tsh also called thyrotrophin adenocorticotropic hormone or acth luteinizing hormone or next follicle stimulating hormone or fsh melanocyte stimulating hormone or msh prolactin or lactogenic hormone also called luteotropic hormone now functions of hormone which are stored in the pituitary or secrete from pituitary gland first of all we will discuss about 
the hormones which are stored in posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis the first hormone is called oxytocin oxytocin stimulates contraction of uterus during birth process and after birth this hormone contracts the cells of lactating ducts to squeeze the milk towards nipples adh anti diuretic hormone also known as vasopressin it acts on the collecting duct of nephron it provides help in the reabsorption of water therefore prevents excess urine production these two hormones are stored in posterior pituitary the hormones which are secreted from anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis number 1 is the growth hormone in previous slide i told you that growth hormone is also called somatotrophin it perform functions to regulate the body growth as the name indicate growth hormone it means this hormone regulates the body growth acth adenocorticotropic hormone adenocorticotropic hormone regulates the function of adrenal mm. cortex i repeat adenocorticotropic hormone regulates the function of adrenal cortex adrenal cortex is the peripheral part of adrenal gland tsh thyroid stimulating hormone or thyrotrophin hormone it controls the function of thyroid gland it means it regulates the secretion of thyroid gland lh hormone or luteinizing hormone it stimulates sexual and reproductive function lh hormone or luteinizing hormone it stimulates sexual and reproductive function in females this hormone initiate the process of ovulation it promotes the development of corpus luteum in male this hormone stimulates the interstitial cells for the secretion of male sex hormone testosterone fsh hormone or follicle stimulating hormone fsh or follicle stimulating hormone it stimulates the production of sperm and egg in ovaries and testes fsh in male is involved in the formation of sperm in the seminiferous tubule while in female it is associated with the egg formation and development of the graafian follicle msh melanocyte stimulating hormone in other mammals msh is uh, secreted from middle lobe of the pituitary gland but in human this msh is secreted from the middle a smallest part it is related to skin pigmentation prl prolactin it is secreted from anterior pituitary and it initiate milk production in the breast it is also helpful in the growth of lactating ducts to secrete more milk 
to feed the young baby. In this slide, we will discuss the disorders of anterior pituitary. One of the common disorder of anterior pituitary is excess secretion of growth hormone also known as somatotrophin. If the growth hormone or somatotrophin during childhood is secreted in excess amount then it causes abnormal growth of the limbs bone and produces giantism in children. The children becomes very tall during the adult life. I have an example of Alam Channa, another example of Nasir Somro. Due to the effect of excess secretion of growth hormone during childhood, the giantism occur in children and they become very tall. Another disorder of growth hormone is called dwarfism. Dwarfism occurs when there is a short supply of growth hormone in childhood. Due to less secretion of growth hormone during early childhood, the growth of limbs bone is checked and the size of the limbs become reduce at compared to the body volume ratio. There are two main types of dwarfism. Number one is called Lorraine and number two is known as Farholix. In Farholix dwarfism which is also known as adiposogenital dystrophy Real childhood metabolic disorder characterized by obesity, growth retardation and retarded development of the genital organ. It is usually associated with tumor of the hypothalamus causing increased appetite and depressed secretion of gonadotrophin. While in Laron syndrome, Laron type of dwarfism is an autosomal recessive disorder characterized by an insensitivity to growth hormone. 